Um, hello, hello. So it is Indy, and I am here to give you a walkthrough of what it is like to be an English teacher. So, like, what it is when you go into a classroom. So, instead of any, uh, just trying to sell you anything or waste your time, I'm just going to jump right into it. So, let's talk about what a day is like as an English teacher. Now, keep in mind, each school is going to be different, but if you work at a language academy, this is generally what you can expect. So, you will generally teach two-hour classes. Uh, during the week, you'll have uh, usually two blocks or two different classes. Since the students will be at school during the day, you'll, they'll do, uh, the kids will go to school during the day, and then they'll go to language centers, so extra schooling at night. So there's a lot of pressure on Vietnamese students to really get good grades, really learn English. So, I mean, literally, they're in school from 7 in the morning till 9.30 at night sometimes. It's ridiculous, plus homework, studying, all that. But you will come in um, if you're working at a language center, not a public school, but a language center, uh, generally around 4.45. Uh, you will prep your classroom. So you'll, you know, say that you work at a school with three, four other teachers. You'll look and see what class that you're being assigned, uh, you know, f for that day. So, for example, um, I'm not going to name where I work at, but let's just say that I had a class called, you know, you know Blue Team. Uh, Blue Team is age seven, and you would follow a pacing guide, which will tell you, okay, today is a phonics lesson. Use, you know, let's use this book, these pages, and these are your lesson names. And then it's on you as a teacher to utilize that two hours of time that you have to be sure that you do the lesson aims. So if it's a phonics lesson, your aim should be making sure that phonics is the main point of the lesson. If it's a reading lesson, then you want your students reading. But you also got to keep in mind the different stage aims. and the different, This is stuff that you'll learn through a like CELTA, um, even your TEFL when you're doing like a lesson planning, uh, but you know how you structure your class. So generally you will, you know, have a warmer, something that you will start up the class with. Uh, generally what I'll do is like circle time. So I'll have students sit around me. We might have a ball and we'll pass it around and we'll have different questions depending on the age level of the students. So, you know, uh, you know, name your favorite animal. Boom, the kid will answer, my favorite animal is a crocodile. Pass it on. This is, you know, younger age group. If it's older, then we might be like, okay, what mass media do you prefer? And what news did you hear today? Can you put that into an English sentence? And it'll challenge the student to, to think critically, which is the teacher, you want to do things called CCQs, which are uh, criti uh, critical uh, questions. Checking questions, excuse me, critical checking questions. So it's not about memorization. It's about the student being able to use that knowledge that they've gained in English and be able to use it critically. So not just memorize the meaning, but able to put it into a sentence, be able to use it. But anyways, back on topic. You will you generally have two classes. You will generally have to come in 30 minutes early. You will prep your class. Your students will come in. And yeah, you will go at it. Now, language centers usually have a little bit more money, a little bit more funding than like public schools. So you'll have access to a either a smart TV that's like touchscreen or a projector. Um, I've seen both. I've worked at all kinds of different. I've worked from the poorest kind of language centers to uh, public schools to some very high end ones with like touchscreen TVs. And uh, yeah, so you'll, you'll prep up, you'll have your YouTube, maybe some YouTube videos already pulled up, minimized. You'll have an online textbook, or if you don't, you'll be writing a lot on your whiteboard. Um, but yeah, so you after a while, it sounds hard, like it's a lot of planning. And in the beginning, it was. Like maybe the first six months of like, I've been doing this for years now, but for the first six month year, it was kind of hard. But now you kind of have, I, as, you, as you gain experience, you'll get like a natural flow of like how a class should be. So like, all right, let's do 10 minutes of greeting, greetings, warmers. 
I want to get the two students' attention. I want them to be excited and engaged. So let's think of creative ways in which to start the class. So we might do a dice roll, and each student will have a number next to their name. And you'll roll the dice, and the dice, if it lands on it, they have to answer a question. Or you might pass out many whiteboards and have like a draw off where students have to, okay, I want everybody to, you know, show me what a, you know, a, um, write down five different verbs or something like that. Or create me a sentence regarding animals. And you have 30 seconds, depending on the levels, of course. Um, now, depending on what uh, source book, textbooks, and uh, the school that you're working at. You might be using some Oxford stuff. You might be using some uh, some Korean uh, brand uh, English books. There's all kinds of different ones. But if you're using like the top tier, like Oxford, you know, uh, which is really good, it's a very popular one. Usually they'll have interactive things in 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 the lesson, so you can hit audio. And it will play vocab words or read a paragraph or there will be songs mixed in. So, um, yeah, so generally what I'll do is I'll come into the class. I will write down on the whiteboard what I'm going to do. So I will make an outline, warmer, circle time, YouTube video, review, uh, bamboozle, break time, uh, page, you know, and then whatever my lesson, uh, whatever my pacing guide, whatever my goal is. So if it's like page 18 to 22, then I'll be like, all right, start page 18. Uh, and then writing practice. I'll have an outline for the students to see. And yeah, I'll just kind of follow that. And now I don't even have to look at the clock. I could kind of just, you know, you, as you get more experience, you'll be able to just kind of go in your mind and know when it's time to move on to something. When the students are retaining something. If the students are getting bored of something, you'll know, all right, let's move on or let's change a different way of teaching it. So there's things such as TPRs, which is when you're teaching English, you want to be able to show an action with that, you know, with that target vocab. For example, I'm teaching a student swimming. Well, OK, show me the action for swimming, you know, the action or, you know, an animal, a cat. You know, stuff that students can associate with that really helps build those neural pathways and those things from memorization. And, um, yeah, so you'll have a, usually a 10, 15-minute break between that 10-minute uh, break, 5-minute break, depending on where you're at. In the class, students will go to the bathroom. As a teacher, trust me, you're going to go outside to get some fresh air. And, yeah, you'll go back and do the second half of the class. And you will have an online usually you'll have some kind of record keeping thing that you do at your school so you'll have to do like okay today's lesson uh zui was you know a very good but we had he was talking too much to me i suggest maybe moving them to a different table um we did a homework check uh ang is falling behind but um uh sal is struggling with her pronouns or whatever um so you know you have to kind of remember your students and be able to kind of keep a little journal that way the next teacher after you if it is because you might not have the same class every week you want the teacher that's going to come after you to be able to see what was taught the week previous read your notes and then be able to pick up that class and then after that you'll have generally have a 15 to 20 minute sometimes 30 minute break and then you'll have a second class and this is during the weekday and this is if you're hourly for salary um Generally, you'll teach anywhere from 22 to 26 teaching hours per week. That is actually in the classroom hours, not, you know, considering like your prep time, making flashcards, creating games, creating PowerPoints, stuff like that. So um, if you're hourly, then it's just as, you know, as much as you want to do. If you're part time, you know, you'll be um, hourly. Um, and yeah, you don't, unfortunately, you don't get paid for any prep work. But if you're experienced enough, then you pretty much already know how to do the prep work because you've done the same lesson hundreds of times. Um, and yeah, you'll usually have some kind of point incentive based or some kind of reward incentive based thing to help your students. For example, uh, stickers, stars on the wall. So what I do is three stars on the wall next to the student's name means you get a sticker. 
if you get an X, then you we delay three X's, mean that you uh, lose five minutes off your break time. A lot of the time, it's just a bluff to get the students to you know to, and you always want to do things like this. Are we paying attention? Use like hand gestures to show students that you know they should be sitting upright, hands on the desk, and that's how you can, you know get people to stop talking and all that. But yeah, that's generally what a class is like, and you it sounds hard, complicated. But now, like literally, like like, say tomorrow I had class, right? I'll go in thirty minutes early. I'll write my stuff on the whiteboard. I'll load up you know, a couple YouTube videos, my online book. I'll have my notes ready, and boom, students come in, and we'll just, we'll start out with some games. Maybe if it's a younger class, we'll do some songs, some dancing, some singing, and then we'll just get into the lesson, and you'll just breeze through it and you, through the semester or however the course is measured so call it a semester or a course or whatever you'll have like you know every few weeks a test or some kind of way of measuring the student's progress and you'll do that through speaking listening and reading those are the three different metrics on which students are graded on and then at the end of the semester there will be things such as a final test and parent teacher uh, meetings which is you'll meet with the parents, you'll have a translator who will, you know, translate for you if the parent doesn't speak English, and you'll just be like, yeah, your student Ming is doing very good in this uh, area, uh, could probably benefit by doing more homework, or his handwriting is a little bit sloppy, but he's very good at, you know, being uh, participating, you know, with other students and so on. And that's pretty much your life as a teacher. I mean, it's really that simple. And the more you do it, the easier it gets. So it, it's not complicated. You don't like I like I said. You don't need thousands of dollars for a TEFL when you can do an online one and learn the basics. Now, if you want to get into like high level, like higher level classes, um, like IELTS and stuff like that, you're going to do a SOTA training, which is going to be a little bit more. Now that you're going to fork some money out for to have a SOTA or a Delta training. Um, those are like very high level, like the highest level you could go with teaching. Um, but that'd be a conversation for another time. So I hope this video helps. I hope it's a, it's a vague outline of what it's like to be a teacher. If you have any questions, let me know. And uh, yeah, if you could, I don't really ask, but if you find any of this information useful, please give me a like. If you consider uh, subscribing, I'd appreciate it. I have been stuck in the last like eight years of having this YouTube um, with, uh, with never been able to hit over 500 subscribers. And I've made like 400 and something videos and I just cannot get past that 500 mark. So if you find any of my content uh, useful or if you would just help me grow, uh, please consider uh, subscribing, leaving a like. And also um, there is a link to a TFL company that I suggest with my own promo code that will save you uh, a huge discount and it's 100% legit it's the same one I used and I've been I've been in Vietnam for years so goodbye and uh, gamun and see you later bye bye